We are live, live and in color. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody. Uh, before I forget, let me tell everyone watching online, thank you for watching and for being here. And if you haven't already, make sure you share the message and keep those likes and those hearts coming. Amen. We want, we want those likes and hearts. No mad faces. No mad faces. No crying faces. Just likes and hearts. That's it. Amen. I got a mint in my mouth. I'm trying not to spit it out when I talk, Brother Howard. So I was like, I knew I wouldn't have time to. It's going to fly out in a minute. <laughs> Amen. But of course, thank all of you guys for joining us tonight as well. I'm so glad that everybody's here. Amen. Why don't y'all give yourself a round of applause for being here? Amen. Woo. Wednesday night. Wednesday night, the hardcore group. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, hey, if you guys want, there's a lot of, as you already know, there's a lot of snacks and there's coffee back there. And Sister Anna brought a lot of good stuff, a lot of drinks. There's uh, a lot of snacks and stuff back there. So, yeah, let's let's give her a hand clap, too. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Amen. And it's good to see everybody here, like I said. Amen. I know there, I know there had to have been somebody in this place that was doing the rain dance today. Somebody had to have been doing it. <laughs> all that downpour we had. <laughs> Amen. It's still wet. <laughs> it's still wet out there right now, but um, y'all brace yourselves. Be, brace yourselves because I heard next week is supposed to be really hot and really dry. So, but I don't know. I'm kind of tired of the rain already. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No mosquitoes. Amen. Yeah. No. I've been cutting cutting some yards lately. You know, to make a little extra cash and stuff like that. And uh, you know, one yard I did last last week. Uh, you know, the grass was really tall and it was really long and um, there were mosquitoes everywhere. And they were, there was, those are those big Texas size mosquitoes, Mary, those big Texas size ones. And I got bit by a few of those. And man, I, I totally forgot that there was going to be mosquitoes because I forgot that it had rain. But the next day I came prepared, I had some off. I was ready. <laughs> some jeans. <laughs> Amen. So I was ready. It wasn't your house, Annie. <laughs> it's a different house. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Amen. But again, I'm glad you are here. And, um, you know, before we begin, um, I felt like I wanted to say something um, before we begin. And uh, that's that's this. I, I kind of feel maybe I'm maybe I'm totally missing this, Brother Edward. I'm not sure. But I kind of feel like there's a lot of needs in this place. You know, we were talking back there earlier about, you know, it's just some things that are going on with people here at the church, you know, health issues, there's financial issues going on. There's a lot of I feel like there's a lot of stress, you know, going on right now. And um, so there's a lot of needs in the church. So I want us to really pray for one another, you know, like the next, you know, week, the next two weeks, whatever it is. I really want y'all to, to have y'all's mind on prayer as of as now to, to whenever, you know, just have your mind on prayer, prayer for the people in the church, prayer for, you know, the people that that need it, the people that need healing or the people that need a miracle in their life, you know, some type of breakthrough. And so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of needs in this place. And I just want us to never forget that because, you know, you might be coming and you might be doing good. You might be doing well, nothing going on with you or whatever. But let me tell you, your brother sitting next to you needs you. Your sister sitting next to you needs you. Your family needs you. Your children need you. Amen. So if you don't have anything to pray about, pray for somebody in the church. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever sat down, got on your knees, and you don't really know what to pray? <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. Like, you're just kind of at a loss for words. Let me give you a hint right now or a clue or some advice. If you ever have that, pray for, for pray for the people in the church. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Lift up Pastor Larry and Pastor Jamie as well. Amen. Because I need it right now, too. Amen. I'm one of those people that is experiencing a need. And I know that there's other people in here as well that are experiencing those as well. So I really just want us to have a mindset of prayer and just just be fixed on the fact that there's needs in this place and we want God to move. Amen. God is not finished with the people in this church. He's not finished with this church. He's not finished with the pastor. He's not finished with you. Amen. God will never tell you it's done. It's finished. You're going to go, you're going to go on and you're going to do what he called you to do. Amen. You, you, there's still things that are, that need to be accomplished in the kingdom and God wants you to do them. Amen. So as a matter of fact, um, why don't let's let's do something a little different. Why don't y'all stand? Can y'all stand for me for a second? Let's stand. Why don't we just let's just pray for them right now, Gloria. Let's pray for all these needs. Amen. 
Now, one need I'm gonna let, I'm gonna throw out there is of course for Joe. We know that Joe is having surgery next week, right, Gloria? So we know he's gonna have surgery next week for what he's going through, and uh, we're gonna lift him up and just pray that hey, the surgery is gonna be successful. In Jesus' name, it's gonna be gone. The cancer's gonna be gone. It's, he's gonna be healed. Amen. We're gonna lift that situation up, and then for. Other things as well, let's just pray in general for these needs, okay? Because God knows those needs, amen? Let's just lift up the people in the church. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we just lift up Joe to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. And Lord, we, we command the healing, Father, to continue to manifest in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you, Lord, that this surgery, Lord, that he's going through next week, Father, will be successful. And Father, it's going to clear the cancer in the name of Jesus, Father. He's going to come out, Lord, with no cancer, Lord. No cancer in the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes, Lord, you just want us to stand, Lord. Sometimes you just want us to stand in faith, Father. Believing, Father. Believe in the word. And I feel like you're saying that tonight, Lord. I feel like the Lord is saying, have you not prayed about it? Have I not spoken and said that I finished the work, that I've done it? He went to the cross for these very things, for this healing, for the, any kind of need that you have tonight. He went to the cross for that. It's nothing too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for God. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that the work is finished in his life, Father. We lift him up to you tonight, Lord. And, Lord, we just, we, we just believe in, Lord, for a good surgery, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and I speak healing in his life. I continue to speak healing in my brother's life in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I also speak encouragement, Lord, into Gloria and into her family as well, Father. Lord, we just speak peace, Lord, into this family, Lord. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord, and you shall prosper. Believe in his word. His word has went out, and it will not return to him void in the name of Jesus. He sends it out. He created the heavens. He created the earth. He created the planets. This is nothing for the Lord. He can do all things. So, Lord, we just speak encouragement over her life, over the family right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just lift up our brothers and our sisters in this church tonight, Lord. You know, I just speak, I just speak, Lord, just a calmness to the people, Lord, in this place. I speak just a peace, Lord, in this place to the people, Father, a peace that passes all understanding, Lord. You know, if there's any kind of, any kind of stress or, you know, anxiety, even other sicknesses and things like that going around, you know, just worry about what's going to happen. Worry about how these situations are going to be resolved. Lord, I just speak a stillness in the name of Jesus. Stillness. Amen. The Lord's given me that scripture where, you know, he spoke stillness to the storm. He said, peace, be still. When there's a storm, church, you have to speak to that storm. You have to rise up. Okay. You can't curl up into a ball. You have to rise up and you have to rebuke the storm. Sometimes it just has to be a simple peace, be still. Peace, be still in the name of Jesus. Church, always remember that we are fighting from victory. We are on top of the mountain. We are not trying to get victory. We're not trying to get healing. We already have it. We're just trying to get it to manifest here. And when things try to steal our joy, when things try to steal our peace, when they try to interfere in what the kingdom of God is trying to do, we're supposed to fight that, kick it off the mountain, and stand there with our heads held high in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I just speak, Lord, that this church would know that we have a mindset of victory, Lord, that it's already been won in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that your spirit would just touch everybody here tonight, Father. Even the people watching, Lord, just touch us. Give us that blessed assurance, Lord. Father, nothing is going to take us out, God. Nothing is going to beat us down, God. Nothing's going to keep us there, Father, but we're going, to, we're going to go where you want us to go. Do what you want us to do in victory in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just speak to these needs, Lord, whatever they are, whatever, you know, the, I feel like there's needs, you know, that, that, that we can't even see in this place tonight. You know, there's, there's, there's needs that, that you and I can't even comprehend in this place because if our brothers and sisters told us about it, we would be amazed at that need. So there are things that we can't even see right now, but the Lord sees, and he knows all. And so the Lord is speaking tonight saying, I see those needs. I see every tear that you cry at night, and I count every single one of them. 
and I've given you the victory in the name of Jesus. You will be victorious in the name of Jesus. You will be number one in the name of Jesus, the champion in the name of Jesus. We're seated with him in heavenly places. So, Father, right now, Lord, just touch the people. Lord, touch us here tonight, Lord. Let us feel your Holy Spirit, God. Let us feel, Father, your presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for your work in this place, Lord. Thank you for moving in this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Edward, I feel the Lord speaking to me about you, bro. Thank you, Jesus. And I see, uh, I see, Brother Edward, I see you. You ever see like, a, this is kind of weird, but you ever see like those witch movies? Like where they have that big old cauldron and they're stirring a big old pot? That's the only thing I can think of. I see you stirring a big pot like that with a giant wooden, like a, like a wooden, almost like a, those things they row with a, a canoe with, yeah, like a paddle. And I see you stirring that and stirring that and I see you going faster and faster and faster and faster, faster. And I, I just, the only word I can, I, can, I can see right now, Brother Edward, is just stir, stir the fire. Keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring in the name of Jesus, keep stirring because there's a, there's a fire inside of you and that fire has not dwindled. It's still there. It's still there, and it wants to grow. But sometimes, like the Bible says, you have to fan the flame. Amen? So continue to stir in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Continue to stir that flame and watch some amazing things happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Church, there's, this, there's the Spirit of God is in this place right now. Amen. He just wants to touch us tonight. I feel like the Lord just wants to give us some assurance tonight. He just wants to speak into our lives. So, Lord, you know, we just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, we just receive it, Lord. And, Mike, I was looking at you a minute ago, too. Mike, I'm going to say something to you, okay? Continue just to have that attitude of faith that you have about that healing that you're trying to get. You know, I, I think I've told you this already when, we're, when, when I prayed for you, but, you know, there sometimes healings, they come instantly. And sometimes they come gradually. And, you know, I feel like your healing is like a gradual thing. You know, I feel like I, I, I feel like it's there. It's happening. It's happening. Maybe it might be happening a little bit slowly, like slower than we want it to come. But it's happening. But what's going to make the difference is you waking up each day saying, Lord, I receive the healing in the name of Jesus. You just simply have to say that. You know, when we, when we open our mouth and when we speak out, it releases the power that's inside of us. So all you have to do, man, is just say, Lord, I received the healing that Pastor Jamie told me about, that the church has prayed for me about. I received the healing. I'm going to get it, and it's, it's going to manifest. And I think that when we do that, maybe the healing will come even faster. You know, when you speak to it, you know, sometimes you, you do things to certain things, and, and they start happening faster, right? So I think that when we speak to that situation, and, and, and if you continue to speak to your legs and you continue to speak to your body, you'll see the healing happen even faster. Say, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus. So, hey, we've already prayed. We've already said it before the Lord. Now, all you got to do is just say, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus. That's the word for you today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for your, your spirit in this place, Lord. And, you know, do what you came here to do, Father. Move in this place, Lord. Move in this place, Father. Just give us a touch of your spirit, Father. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're operating the way that you want to operate, Father. And you're doing a mighty work in this place. Mighty work in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Diana, I see so many, I see so many more blessings in your life, Diana. I feel like you have, I feel like you, you've, you're already at that point where you're like, man, I've been blessed so much already. Like, what else can God do for me? But I feel like God is saying that that's just the beginning of what I want to do for you. 
that's just the beginning. You know, he's, he owns, the Bible says, cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all. And so we, what we think is a lot, to God, it's, it's so much bigger. It's so much bigger than what we can think, ask, imagine. And so the Lord says, there's more coming your way. I, he says he wants to do something special just for you, to show you and to reward you for your faith. So, Lord, I just pray, Father, that these, whatever it is, Father, this, this special, these blessings or this, this outpour that you want to give her, Father, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that it would happen quickly in the name of Jesus. So, Father, she receives it, Lord. And us here as, as, her, as her church family, we, we stand here with our arms around her, Lord, saying, Lord, we want her to be blessed. So, Father, pour out the blessings on our sister, Lord. Continue to pour out, Lord, that'll just overshadow her, Lord, and will keep her in that attitude of faith, Lord. Father, I want you to bless her, Lord, so much that even if it means me not getting a blessing, I want you to give her a blessing, Lord, so that she'll know your spirit, Lord, is real and that your spirit, Lord, wants to bless and move even more in her life. It's not based on works. It's not based on anything we do. It's just God simply saying, I want to be good to you. I want to love on you because you're my daughter who I love, who I've put my spirit inside of, who I've touched and I've blessed and I've created a purpose for. Even when you can't see it, even when you think the, with the race is finished or, or your life is finished or you've, you've been at your peak, there's more that God wants to give you receive that in the name of Jesus. And church, you know, that's kind of like for all of us tonight. We think, we might think that God is finished, but he's just begun. In the name of Jesus, Father. So we just thank you tonight, Lord. We just thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Church, I had no idea that God wanted to do this tonight. <laughs> I just came up here, Brother Edward, it just started flowing out of me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I feel a word for you too, Jonathan. Amen. It, it's like it's coming at me right now. It's kind of like a, like a, you know, the Bible says that we say things not so clearly sometimes, but it's, it's, coming, it's coming to me right now. I think that, I think that sometimes, I think that sometimes you feel like, like what you do is not important. And I think that sometimes you feel like God can't use me, but God can use anybody. He can use whoever he wants to use. And there's a, I feel like there's a talent inside of you. The Lord says there's, there's a talent inside of you and there are things inside of you that he's trying to bring out of you, that he wants to cultivate more, that he wants he wants to bring out of your life so that other people can see how amazing God is. You know, like the woman that, uh, the woman in the Bible that had, a, she had the illness, right? I, I believe she was bent over and then they asked him, they said, who sinned? Was it her parents or somebody else that she was born like that? And the Lord said, she was, this happened so that the glory of God can be manifested. And I feel like that's kind of like how God wants to use you. He, he wants to use you in amazing ways and do amazing things and, and cultivate these talents in you so that other people can look around and say, wow, that's the glory of God right there because only God could have done that. And I just want you to, just like with, just like with Mike, I want you just to receive it. You know, if you simply just wake up each day and you say, Lord, I receive the gifts that you put inside of me. I believe and the talents that you put inside of me. It, you know, if, if you can just switch your life and start doing that, even if it just takes like three seconds every day, saying, Lord, I receive what, you do, what you've done for me. You know, all the, the things that you've been through, all, all the, you know, the, the Bible studies that you've had, you know, the, the church things you've attended, all of that is not in vain. You know, all the, all the, the, the knowledge that's been put in you, not, not by just Pastor Larry and I, but others that have pour, poured into your life, because we can receive things from other people as well. And all those things that have been poured into your life are for a purpose. It's not just, just for nothing. It's because God is trying to cultivate something in you, but you have to receive it. You have to say, Lord, I take it. I receive it. And, you know, sometimes it's easy for us to get distracted, you know, by 
you know, everything in life, that we just forget to receive the blessings that God has poured out in our life. But he wants to do that for you. So just meet him halfway every day. Just wake up and say, Lord, I receive it. And you're going to begin to see it. You're going to begin to see the cultivation and all this, this kingdom that God has put inside of you come to pass in the name of Jesus. I believe that. Amen. Amen. We just receive the word tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We receive what God is trying to do tonight. Amen. Amen. Church, you, you may be seated. Amen. Glory. Ooh, amen. Just reach out and take it, church. Reach out and take it. Amen. Reach out and take it. God is, God is amazing, man. He's doing some amazing things tonight. Oh, man. You know, I needed that, too. You know, uh, I was honestly, uh, I was thinking, you know, I, I always want to bring up and, and preach to you guys something that, you know, I really feel strongly about. And, um, you know, I was receiving kind of a block today, Pastor Larry, on, on you know, what I should say. And, you know, uh, and I've, I've been very busy lately as well. So, you know, my mind as well, Brother Edward, has been kind of like all over the place. But, uh, you know, as I was praying today and this morning, you know, I was getting things ready and I'm I felt like just sleep start to come over me, like God was just trying to give give me rest and peace, you know. And then it's it's funny because like sometimes we think we need to work to get what God is trying to do in our life, but when we just sleep, and then when we wake up, it's like everything is already there. <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything. Even I, I literally I fell asleep. I laid down on my floor. I put a blanket down on my floor and I laid down. And uh, I started to drift off, you know, and, and I said, Lord, you know, just whatever you want to happen, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you want me to speak, you know, just just let it happen. And I, I slept for a little bit and I felt better, you know, when I woke up and then I had a word for you guys tonight, too. And everything that happened here uh, just now, I feel like kind of ties into what I wanted to share with you all tonight. So uh, God, God moved and he gave us some words, uh, but I'm going to. What I can do is I can give you guys a simple message for what I was going to say tonight. I can kind of shorten it a little bit because I do want to share this with y'all as well. Uh, so are y'all ready for the word? Amen. 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 And if you're watching online, just reach out and take it. Amen. Just like I said. Amen. I want you all to turn to John chapter, John chapter 14. We all know this passage. John chapter 14, verse 16. And then I'll tell y'all what I'm going to talk about and all that. Amen. John chapter 14, verse uh, 16. Are you blessed tonight, church? Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Look, it's in uh, John chapter 14, verse 16. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Amen. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. Yes. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. And then he, I love this part right here. He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Amen. So what I, what I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about tonight was the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm just going to mention, I'm, I'm just going to briefly talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we've been having some amazing things happen in this church, Amen. you know, lately. God has been moving, you know, Amen. just like what we saw a minute ago and just... You know, we've been having some great services. If you ain't been here, you need to start coming so you can plug in. Amen. <laughs> or if you ain't been watching, you need to start watching because God has been doing some amazing things. Amen. I don't know if y'all believe in prophecy and, and, and things like that, but I do. Amen. And I believe that when we tap into it, you know, God can really begin to move. I believe we're going to see some greater things. Some of you guys have been healed in this place. You know, some of you guys have been touched. Things that nobody else would have known were spoken to you by somebody else. Why? Because God is trying to speak into your life because God knows all things, right? Yes. Now, why, why does all this stuff happen, Elvira? Why, why, why does God choose to do that? 
Well, a short answer I can give you guys is because it's the Holy Spirit. So if you do not believe in the Holy Spirit, you need to start believing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you need to really grab on to what the Holy Spirit is in your life. So, yeah, I can do some class. We can do some little bit of class participation. Who can tell me what is the Holy Spirit? What do y'all think the Holy Spirit is? Like, just give me a quick answer. What do you think the Holy Spirit is? The comforter, the comforter, the, comforter, the helper. That's good, Mary. Yeah, did somebody say something over there? The helper. the helper. Okay, amen. Comforter, helper, guide, I think you said. Oh, yeah? Okay. So he's the comforter. He's the helper. I would just say, Pastor Larry, that the Holy Spirit is just God. <laughs> it's All it is is just God's Spirit. That's it. It's just another name for God's Spirit who, that moves among us and, and does things. Now, um, let me get a little, let me, let me kind of teach y'all something a little bit, okay? Whenever God moves in this place or whenever God deals, you know, he does something among us or He's, he moves inside of us. Technically, that's the Holy Spirit working inside of you. In other words, it's technically, let, y'all just take what I'm saying and just don't, don't get offended or upset by what I'm saying. But it's technically not really correct to say that Jesus was in the church today. Why? Because Jesus is the name of the body that walked on the earth 2,000 years ago the man, right? That was the flesh. That was Jesus. Now, it's not incorrect to say that Jesus was here because the Holy Spirit is Jesus, yeah. right? That's the same thing. But if you want to be real technical and you want to be like a Bible policeman about it, it's actually more correct to say that the Holy Spirit was here today because he said right here, Jesus said, Brother Edward, he said, I'm going to leave, right? Did he not? Yeah. He said, I'm going to leave and I'm not going to be here anymore. He said, but when I leave, I'm going to send you what? The comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And so what we have today in the church, Annie, is not, we technically really don't have Jesus in the church because Jesus has already ascended to heaven, the body. When we say Jesus, what we're saying is the man that walked the earth 2,000 years ago, the body, right? Uh, But when we say the Holy Spirit, what are we saying? That's the comforter, the spirit that he left with us, his spirit, God's spirit that moves among the church today today here in the new covenant. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Hopefully that doesn't upset y'all. Again, it's not incorrect to say that Jesus was in the house today because I say that because they're the same thing. It's not incorrect to say that God was in the house today, that the father was here today because he was. But if you want to be real technical about it, what did he leave us? He left us the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit, just like y'all said, Mary, it's the comforter, It's the helper, the one that's supposed to comfort you and help you in every area of your life. So if I can say something right now, I think that the reason why, Annie, some some Christians are maybe experiencing a little bit of stress and anxiety and things in their life is because they're not looking for comfort in the Holy Spirit. They're looking for comfort in their pastors or they're looking for comfort in their friends or from their paycheck are from their jobs or from their favorite TV preacher, you know, that where can I get my next good word, my next comforting message, but they never ever go to the comforter, (laughs) which is the Holy Spirit. I mean, I want y'all to really think about it for a moment. How many Christians are there that go to like these big popular churches out there, right? They go to these big popular churches and they, they hear a message every Sunday, Elvira, and really what happens is they're just like, they're just like an empty car. My, well, before we, my, my car has about nine miles left on it, and then I'm out of gas right now. <laughs> In fact, I don't know if you saw that, Larry, but I'm running on, I'm, I'm almost running behind you right now. I need to put some gas in there. Amen. I'm running on faith. But you see, I am. I, I, I'll show you all if y'all want to out there. I, don't, I'm, I just need to go get some gas. I just haven't done it yet. But there are a lot of Christians who are just like my truck out there, Edward. They are running on fumes, <laughs> running on E. Yes. And then what happens, Albert, is they go all week like that. And then they wait till Sunday to get pumped up again. In other words, they get some gas on Sunday. They get some gas. They get their message. They get their comfort. And then what they do is they go back out there and they start spending all their gas again until they're running on E. And then they wait till Sunday and they come back and get pumped up again. Get some more gas, just like a car. 
Get, get fueled up. We do that all the time, right? Getting gas is just a part of life. Amen. Any of y'all got that speedy stop, like points or whatever? <laughs> we get gas all the time because our car runs out. But Jesus said, if you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. If you t- partake of me, you will never hunger. You will never thirst again. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there are times where, hey, we do feel a little bit dry, and we do need to just kind of tap in a little bit more. But if we woke up more to the reality that he lives in us, that the comforter lives inside of us, that we don't have to get fueled up because we stay fueled up all the time throughout the week because we already have everlasting gas inside of us, (laughs) the fuel that gets us through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. We don't have to wait until Sunday to get pumped up again, but that's what some Christians are doing. They're waiting to get pumped up again on Sunday so that they can get what they need. Why are they doing that? Because they're not partaking of the comforter throughout the week. Think about it. Think about it. These Christians that go to these big churches, how many of them really talk about the Holy Spirit? How many of them really even, do those words even come out of their mouth? Holy Spirit. Probably not, right? They're just interested in getting a good message. And just listening to KSBJ <laughs> and getting the new Hillsong CD. Amen. <laughs> That's it. But do they have a knowledge and a working of the Holy Spirit in their life? Because what the church needs now, let me tell you, Alvira, is not another good message. We don't need another good word. We need the power of the Holy Spirit working in our churches today. When we get that, the church will begin to change. Your problems will begin to melt away because you're partaking of the Holy Spirit. What Jesus died to give you. He said, I'm leaving, but when I'm leaving, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. You're not an orphan in this place today. You don't ha- you're not fatherless. You're not motherless. You have the Holy Spirit that goes with you everywhere. But how many of us are partaking of that Holy Spirit? How many of us are, when we need comfort, how many of us go to the comforter to get comfort? Or do we go look up our favorite pastor's Facebook so we can get a good encouraging word? Really? How many of us do? I'm not saying that that's wrong in and of itself. I do that sometimes. I, like, I got my favorite preachers I listen to and all that. But really, at the end of the day, your comfort and your number one source should be Jesus. Should be really technically, again, if you want to be technical about it, it should be the Holy Spirit. Because that's what lives inside of you. Jesus really doesn't live inside of you. I mean, he, he does, but you don't have a person on the inside of you, a body on the inside. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's okay to say Jesus, but you really, technically, it's the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. The God, what is that? That's God's Spirit. That's all it is. God's Spirit living and working among people. Amen. That's what we need in our church today. Amen. Now, I want y'all to turn to Ephesians chapter 1 real quick. We need the Holy Spirit in our churches. We need the Holy Spirit in our life on Monday, Tuesday, every day of the week. As a matter of fact, the reason why, turn to Ephesians chapter 1, and um, I'm just going to keep talking here, but the reason why I'm talking about this tonight is because I want y'all to start getting that term in your vocabulary in this church. I want y'all to start speaking and understanding that word, the Holy Spirit. What does he do? What is he here for? What, What do I need the Holy Spirit for? You know, the Bible says that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to God, (laughs) that you're none of his. You don't belong to God if you don't have the Holy Spirit. So, hey, the Bible says examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Amen. Look at yourself and say, do I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me? Amen. I do. And I, I know that probably everybody in here has the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, that's okay. Because you can get the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's free of charge. Amen. It's not, you can't buy it at Walmart. You don't, have to, you don't have to work for it. If you want it, you can have the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit just means you're saved. When it, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me, uh, let me read this. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 13. Feel a preach coming on, Pastor Larry. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. It says, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. Uh, I think other translations say, in him you've also believed. But it continues to say it right here. It says, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, 
what does it say? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In other words, Albert, when you believed in the Holy Spirit, you were sealed. When you believed in God, you believed in the gospel, you believed in Jesus Christ, did what, you did what was necessary to get saved, right? When, when you did that, the Holy Spirit, you were also sealed with the Holy Spirit. You ever see like those old time movies where they, they seal letters with like the hot wax or whatever? It's, it's a seal to keep it in, right? We don't do that anymore, right? We have this, those stick on things, right? But the, it, that, that's what this scripture is referring to, a seal. In other words, you're, you're, you're patched, you're ironed, you're sealed, seared with the Holy Spirit now. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. And he says, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee, I love that, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The guarantee, the Holy Spirit is our guarantee of our inheritance. Amen. So this kind of answers the question, in my opinion, because there is actually some debate out there, Edward, where people say, like, when do you get the Holy Spirit? When, when exactly does the Holy Spirit come inside of a person? Well, I believe that the Holy Spirit comes inside of you whenever you believe. Yeah. Whenever you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you get the Holy Spirit. Now, there are some people out there, not to get too much into it, but that do believe that, like, you can believe in Jesus Christ, but that's not enough because you have to get the Holy Spirit, too. And what they're going to do is they're going to bring you up to the altar, and they're going to push your head back to a 90-degree angle and scream in your face and tongues until you get the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And they'll do that until you, quote, unquote, get the Holy Spirit. And, you know, there are people that that kind of puts a little bit of confusion in people because they come to the altar, Annie, and they stand there and they just start crying. And they're like, why, why am I not getting the Holy Spirit? I want it. Why isn't God not giving it to me? I'm crying for it. God isn't giving it. You see, it causes a lot of confusion and a lot of sadness in people. But if only, amen. Yeah, exactly. If they only knew that the belief seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what this scripture says right here, right? It says, in him you have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It doesn't say, in you who have come to the altar and got your head pushed back, you've got the Holy Spirit. It says, if you believed, you get the Holy Spirit. So I believe that the Holy Spirit is inside of you if you've honestly and truly put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, there are some people who think that maybe they have put their faith in Jesus, but they're kind of fooling people around them and they really haven't. But that's not for you to be like worried about because if you honestly can say you put your faith in the Holy Spirit, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, amen, I believe it. Amen, I believe that you're saved. The Bible says that John writes these things so that we can know that we're saved. I know amen. I'm saved and you should know that you're saved as well. And if you know that you honestly believe in Jesus Christ, church, you have to believe that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you as well, yes. that he sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise. The problem is, Gloria, is that some people just don't access that power that's on the inside of them. <laughs> they believe, amen, they, they're, they're saved, Edward, they, hey, they're going to heaven, man, they love Jesus and all that, but because they don't really know about the Holy Spirit and what his power is, what his, what his operation is, because church, I don't know if you know it, but we got a job to do here on the earth. Amen. We're not just here just to go to church and go home. God wants us to, to bring his kingdom to the earth, and we can't do that without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, but if these people knew the power that's on the inside of them, and if they knew what the Holy Spirit's purpose was, they wouldn't be so running out of gas all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be so fearful all the time. They wouldn't be so worried all the time, waiting for church on Sunday. Hey, but I love church. I can't wait for church, but church is not where I get fueled up. I get fueled up in the presence of God, in the presence of Jehovah, in the presence of the Holy Spirit is where I get my fuel. Amen. That's, and that's all you need, church. So this, uh, why did I read that? Just to tell you and just to assure you that if you believe, you get the Holy Spirit. Because, again, there's debate about there about when we get it. But I know, and I know Pastor Larry agrees too, whenever you believe, you got the Holy Spirit. So you know what? If you believe and you have the Holy Spirit, I want you to raise your hand right now. Amen. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Hey, you got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what the King James says, Holy Ghost. Amen. I still use that term sometimes. You, you got something, Edward? Yeah. I know there was a 
<laughs> I was too. I was too. I got my head pushed back. <laughs> Mm. 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 That's good, Edward. And yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. That's good, brother. That's good. I'm glad you brought that out, brother Edward, because that's so true. And, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with falling out. If you want to fall out and you feel like the Lord is causing you to fall out, if you feel like the Lord is causing you to cry, if you feel like you want to speak in tongues, we, we, we welcome all that here in this church because I believe that's biblical stuff. And so that, that's so true. Like a lot of people, they want to feel what's on the inside of them, and that's okay. Amen. If you want to feel the Holy Spirit, feel it. But also know that even if you don't feel it, you still have it. Amen. You still have it. And you just have to be you just have to be assured of that, that you still have it, even if you don't feel it. Not only for church. Yes. Amen. You can walk in it and mm -hmm. walk into a grocery store. Amen. You walk into a, a restaurant. The Spirit of God is within you. Amen. Yes. And Anywhere you go. There is something different for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's that's good, too, right there. Y'all are saying some good stuff. I need to let y'all up here to preach. You got the Holy Spirit with you anywhere you go. Amen. It's not just at church. Amen. You know, you can speak in tongues wherever, you know, you and you can you can feel the Holy Spirit any any time you want to feel the Holy Spirit. Now, it's, it's like I always tell you guys. You, you just can't get caught up too much on the emotions of it. Th yeah. those, those are emotions, yeah. and those are good, yeah. but you can't get so caught up as to where if I don't feel them, then I'm not experiencing yeah. the Holy Ghost, you know, which everybody in here has learned by now, hopefully, you know, yeah. coming here, because you're just not always going to feel God in, at church, you know. We've come to church plenty of times where, we, you know, we, we, I guess we can kind of say we, we didn't feel really God, but, you know, we, something else happened or whatever, but... You can't get so caught up in your feelings all the time because we don't live based on our feelings and based on what we feel. We live based on our faith. Amen. And our faith. Yeah, we walk by faith, not by sight. Even when we don't feel it, we believe it. Like the song says, even when even when we don't see it, we know that he's working behind the scenes. Amen. That's that's just our that's our default right there. Faith should be your default. Amen. Even when you don't feel his presence, when you don't feel God. And I, uh, it's good you mentioned that, guys, because... Um, you know, I've, I've prayed for somebody that's come up here before who said that, like, you know, I was feeling, she, she said, I was feeling God so much, Gloria. You know, I would literally feel his presence when I would pray in my room. And then she said, well, now I'm not feeling him anymore, and I'm discouraged. And then shortly after that, she stopped coming to church. Mm. Why? Because she was, if I said her name, you would know who she is. But why? Because she was putting so, too much dependence on the feels on feeling God. And when she doesn't feel God anymore, it, she feels like God has left her. Why? Because she's too caught up in the emotions of it. Because when you don't feel God, it's just like in a marriage. When you don't feel love from your spouse, yeah. you still have to stay in the marriage yeah. because the love is coming, hopefully. <laughs> right? Hopefully. Amen. The love is coming. Amen. And it, it, it's not always going to be roses and, and, and flowers and butterflies and, and chocolates and stuff like that. It's just going to be just getting through life sometimes, right? Yeah. But, and sometimes I believe that's the way it is in God as well. If you don't feel him, I, I believe that if you want to feel God, you know, pray, be, be encouraged to pray and say, God, I want to feel your presence right now. I want to sense you right now. There's nothing wrong with saying that. But if you don't, don't let it get discouraged. Walk away saying, Lord, I believe that you heard my prayer. I believe that you're still with me and you're in me. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to cling to my faith right now. And that's it. And you never know. After you do that, you're going about your day, God may hit you later on in the day. <laughs> and you may start to feel God later on in the day when you least expect it. How many of you know that God hits you sometimes when you least expect it? <laughs> when you least expect God is when he shows up in your life. Amen. <laughs> so you just have to be assured of that, church. Amen. So um, I'll, I'll finish. Um, I, I've kind of said everything I wanted to say. Do y'all understand what I'm saying so far about the Holy Spirit? Uh, and I just want to give you this real quick and a couple more things and I'll be finished. All right. 
Amen. So uh, go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I love the Holy Spirit. Amen. Galatians 5, and uh, just look at verse 22. This is another scripture we all know. But I'm going to give you, uh, real quick, I'm just going to give you two benefits of the Holy Spirit. Or, yeah, two, two advantages or two benefits for having the Holy Spirit, okay? 522. Amen. We should all know this. A lot of you have it as a picture frame in your kitchen. Amen. <laughs> With little pieces of fruit all over it. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and I love the last one, (laughs) self-control. Against such there is no law. Amen. So one of the benefits of having the Holy Spirit, did you know, is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. That's very good. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Amen. That is so good, Pastor Larry, because, you know, a lot of us, like we like we just got through saying, we look for like side effects, if you could say, like emotions and things like that. But really, the true test of the Holy Spirit of our living inside of you is this joy and peace in your life. Kindness. Are you kind to the waitress at the restaurant? Are you kind to the person at the grocery store? Goodness, faithfulness, gentle. Are you gentle with people? Amen. Are you faithful, you know, with people? Do you keep your word? Do you say people, tell people you're going to come to their house, you're going to do this, but then you don't show up and you don't even call them? To me, that's not being faithful. (laughs) Hey, we got to learn to be people of our word. Amen. (laughs) Yeah. Amen. That's good. Of our the fruit, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Gentleness, the kindness. You know, can you see that? Amen. That's good, Elvira, that you said that. That's right. That's right. Because the fruit is is it's it's exactly what it says. Do you, we I feel like we kind of forget that sometimes. It's the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit that you have living inside of you. So if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you should be thrilled and you should uh, like love the fact that God is causing you to be gentle with people. He's causing you to have self-control. So like if you're battling something in your life that like maybe like some type of addiction or some kind of habit that's hard for you to kick, self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So if you cling to the Holy Spirit more and you go to the comforter like I'm talking about, maybe you'll get some more self-control in your life. Like you said, Mary, temper. You know, if you have a temper problem, an anger problem, well, one of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness and gentleness and goodness. So if somebody is constantly outbursting with anger, which is actually one of the fruits of the flesh, outburst of anger, <laughs> it actually says that, and I don't know if it's in the next scripture or another book, but outburst of anger, what does that mean? It means that you're not clinging to the comforter. You're not clinging to the Holy Spirit because you're not showing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You understand? So we should be glad and happy that, hey, since we have the Holy Spirit, we're going to show these good characters to people. And when you have this, these kind of characters in your life, it, it, it makes everything just a lot easier, right? It's so much easier to be good to people and be kind to people, right? Even if they're mean to you. That's Amen. Right. Sometimes you yeah, that's right. Sometimes you don't want to. It is hard. And then another fruit of the, or not fruit, another benefit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, is uh, we won't go there, but just write it down, okay? And you can, because y'all probably know this one too. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, Write down 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
in verses 4 through 10. And y'all can read those in y'all's in your spare time, okay? Just a few verses. And w- another benefit of the Holy Spirit is the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Gifts of this. Y'all know the Bible talks about the gifts of the Spirit. So we have the fruits of the Spirit, and we have the gifts of the Spirit. All of this happens and can only happen if you have the Holy Spirit <laughs> inside of you. That's a benefit of having the Holy Spirit. You know, these things are not in the Bible, Brother Tim, just to sound pretty and just to be good. These are things that you have living on the inside of you if you belong to Christ. Now, I don't believe that everybody has every single gift out there. I think that some of us have different gifts because the scripture actually says that there's diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There's difference of ministries, but the same Lord. There's different activities, but it's the same God. And then he says, basically what Paul is saying in this scripture is that there are different gifts, but Everybody doesn't have all the gifts. He says, but all these gifts work together in the church and in the body to make something good happen and to, you know, to bring the kingdom to the earth. And some of the gifts he talks about is like the gift of wisdom, for example. So if you're a person that is very wise, you know, how many of y'all are, y'all know people that are really wise? I ain't one of those people. <laughs> in other words, you're, you're, there's, there's a difference between wisdom and knowledge, right? How does the old saying go? It's like, Knowledge is knowing uh, how to make ketchup, or, and, and then wisdom is knowing, wisdom is knowing not to put ketchup on, on cake or something like that. You know, it goes something like that, right? So if you know how to make ketchup, that's knowledge, right? But if you know not to put that ketchup on a chocolate cake, <laughs> which some of you probably like that in here, I don't know. But if you know not to put that ketchup on a chocolate cake, that's wisdom, <laughs> Okay, so there's a difference. So there are some people that are just very wise and they just they seem to have a gift of wisdom. And there's other different kinds of gifts as well. Uh, There's gifts of uh, let me just read one of them here. There's gifts of healing. Let's use that one. So there are some people that I believe that just have a gift of healing. In other words, God uses them very much to heal people. That's just something they operate very strongly in. You know, maybe they, they love to heal people, and they just have this gift of healing inside of them. There's a gift of prophecy, meaning that you, maybe you just, you're very gifted and always prophesying to people. You're speaking the words of God to, uh, over their life, something that you would not have known, but God has given you the gift of prophecy to speak into their life, or you know something that will happen in the future. What is that? The gift of prophecy. And there's other gifts... Yeah, it doesn't make you a prophet. That's why, I, yeah, there's a difference between being a prophet and then having a gift of prophecy. But there's other different kinds of gifts as well. But these kind of, these gifts are all given to benefit the body of Christ. Amen? So I don't know what kind of gift you have, maybe, but I'm sure that everybody in here has some type of gift, some type of gift given by the Holy Spirit that God wants you to use and tap into more of so that you can affect the kingdom of God and so that you can affect your community, your family, the people around you. You know, hey, we all believe that, uh, like Pastor Larry, you've been prophesied over that you have a gift of teaching. So God uses him to teach, and he's just a good teacher, right, the way he speaks and the way he breaks things down. And so we recognize that gift inside of him. What is that? That's a gift of the Holy Spirit a benefit that comes from having the Holy Spirit. Now, maybe, you know, we can talk about gifts another day. I didn't want to get too much into all the gifts. I just want you to be aware that there are gifts of the Holy Spirit, that this is one of the benefits of having the Holy Ghost, and that you could have one of those gifts as well. Amen? Amen. So those are the benefits of having the Holy Spirit. And uh, hey, you know what? I'm just going to stop right there because I I, I felt like that was a good message. Amen? (laughs) Amen. We need to talk more about the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, we've been saying a lot of things about how, you know, God is moving in this church and, you know, we want to see more of the moving of the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, we need to know what the Holy Spirit is, what he does, how he operates, how we can tap into him. This is all stuff you need to know, church. Amen. And we'll talk more about it. We'll have a better, we'll have a, maybe we can have like a better, big teaching about the Holy Spirit and all this stuff going forward. This was just the tip of the iceberg. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. Amen. So, yes, we're going to continue to pray for, for Joe and 
Does anybody else have any needs in this place tonight? That's right, yeah. We're going to pray for Dora. Yeah, Denise's mother who had surgery today, a big surgery. We're going to pray for that, Mike. For you, for Mike as well, amen, for his legs and for his health. Okay. Uh, when is your MRI, Mike? Okay. Okay. 17. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to pray for that. Amen. I'm believing a good report in that, Mike. I'm standing for you, man. Amen. I'm believing it. I feel it. Amen. Well, uh, like, you know, yes, we, we prayed, you know, before, but we're going to just take these needs again before the Lord tonight. So let's pray. Amen. Let's just pray for a good week as well. Lord, we thank you for your spirit in this place, Father, your Holy Spirit, Lord, that leads us and guides us into all truth, Father. Lord, right now, we just continue to lift up Joe to you, Father. We're going to continue to pray for that situation and believe the best, Lord. We're going to continue to speak into his life, Lord, because we know that the healing is already complete, Father. So thank you for the healing, Father. Thank you for the manifestation of the healing in his life. In Jesus' name. And Father, we pray as well, Lord, for Dora, Denise's mom. Lord, we lift her up to you tonight, God. We just, we pray, Lord, for a a speedy recovery, Father, for a painless recovery in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you, Lord, that her body is is healthy, Father. That it's healthy now. It's whole. It's complete. She's going to begin to feel the health and the, the, the healing and the completeness in her body in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just lift her up to you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we continue to pray for, for Mike as well, Lord, and we're believing you for a good report for this MRI, God. And, Lord, as the, when the day comes, Father, you know, just let there just be a, a healing, Father, in his, in his legs, Father, in his body, Lord. And it's, I, I, just, I just feel like it's going to be a good report. So, Father, we just lift him up to you, Lord. We pray over that situation, God. We bring it to you. And, Lord, we thank you. Father, we just uh, continue to pray for everybody in this church, Lord, as we leave here tonight, God. We want to feel your spirit more, God. We want to know your Holy Spirit more, Lord. So as we leave here, we're going to have a great week, Father, knowing that you're inside of us. We're going to tap into your Holy Spirit more, Father, into the comforter. You know, maybe we're just going to be at our house, Lord, just in our living room, and we're just going to say, I want to commune with the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to start to speak to you and sense you more in our life, Father. And we're going to see you working more in our life. Church, I believe and declare that you're going to see the power of the Holy Spirit this week. You're going to see the power of the Holy Spirit moving more in your life. So, Father, we just believe and we receive it in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all you're doing, Father. We bless you. We love you. We worship you. And, Lord, we just we thank you, Lord, for all these mighty works that you've been showing us lately. And, Father, bless everybody as we leave here tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Church said, amen. Amen, church. I love y'all.